Hey everyone, Dan Takashi here. Been getting lots of questions, lots of comments about gold, silver, platinum. Gold, just the last few days it's gone up almost 3%. Silver, on the other hand, there's the last few days it's gone up almost 9%. Platinum has gone up a little bit as well. What's going on here with these precious metals? Just two weeks ago, I gave out a message saying short these just for the short term. Long term, continue to hold, buy, but short term, you could short. What do I think now? What is the update? But today, I'm going to try to summarize this in a 10 minute video on what I think about these precious metals, both long term and short term, and with the impact of all this news that's happened during the last week with Prime Minister Abe resigning and the new Fed's inflation policy. So, Let's get started. For the, but before I get started, for those of you new viewers and subscribers, my name is Dan. Please see the description area below. Former hedge fund guy, former Wall Street guy, traveled the world, came back to Tokyo, Japan just recently and started a YouTube channel in Japanese, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, also everything for the first time and just started this English channel actually only two and a half months ago. So uh, hopefully you will press subscribe below to the button and follow me going forward. Uh, so let's get started. Today's theme, I want to break up into three main topics. Uh, number one, just a review of what is going on here. Uh, there's a lot going on, actually. Uh, so in terms of why this news is impacting, uh, you know, with Abe resigning and the Fed's new policy, I, I did two videos on both of this, but I'm going to summarize it again and I'll put it at the very end screen so you can watch it. But why this is impacting the precious metals? What does this have to do with the precious metals and why is it impacting the price so much? Number two, let's do an analysis today. A little bit more short term where is the price going and then number three what's my recommendation do i recommend you stick with this short short term short term short there's a double short or do i recommend you just get out and now you start buying short term as well this is a short term analysis not long term so let's get started guys first and foremost there's a lot of news out just the last one week this has been actually quite a big news week for the summer. Usually summers are, are pretty quiet, but this has been quite big. Uh, one of the largest political news in the world is Prime Minister Abe, the longest serving prime minister since the end of the Second World War, has resigned and stepped down. He was in charge and he was the one who promulgated Abenomics. Now, this is a quite a reflationary policy, and this has helped move the dollar yen up from it was around uh, 80 uh, to roughly now it went up to, you know, 105, 110 level. At one point, it was actually 125. Uh, this is a very reflationary policy, meaning trying to uh, decrease the value of the yen to other currencies by printing more and more money. And by him resigning, it put a lot of pressure on people to sell the dollar yen. That's right, the dollar yen. And as we saw, I did a video on this before, there was a huge move down on August 28th uh, when Abe's prime minister uh, resignation was announced. And this is a massive, what's called a bearish engulfing candle. Uh, just zooming out here. This is a massive bearish engulfing candle. Now it's started to tick up a little bit, but this put a lot of pressure down as a lot of investors were, uh, have been, for the past eight, eight years, eight and a half years, actually, since Abe has uh, come into power, been betting on Abenomics by uh, buying Japanese stocks, but also buying the dollar yen, as in uh, betting on the yen to further uh, decrease versus the dollar. So people were taking their positions off massively. And this put pressure on the US dollar to be sold because the US dollar yen is one of the largest currency pairs in the world. So when this goes down, it puts pressure overall on the DXY index. This is the uh, dollar index. This is again, the dollar on the numerator, on the denominator, it is the Euro, the yen, the Swiss franc, the pound and the Swedish Krona, I believe. I believe it's those five. So the, the whole basket went down. Basically, what happened was with this Abe news, there was a lot of pressure to sell the dollar. Why? It's the summer market. It's lulls, summer lows, uh, summer lows, as you say. Volumes are very low. A lot of people are on vacation. So as a result, when there's massive news out, and this is big news, big, big political news that sells the dollar yen, a lot of algos around the world will move together to sell the dollar. And selling the dollar is equivalent because most currencies are pairs to the other side going up. If you don't understand that, don't worry. I'll explain it again later on. So essentially what happened was 
This put pressure on not just the dollar yen to be sold, but the dollar versus everything to be sold. As we can see with the charts here, the dollar Mexican peso, the dollar Russian ruble, the dollar czar, uh, the dollar, uh, what, this goes on and on, the dollar Canadian dollar, uh, the dollar euro, the dollar Aussie dollar, whatever you want to put it when you have the odd dollar on the numerator, everything got sold down. And as a result, it also put pressure on the dollar with gold. Now, when the dollar goes down, gold is denominated also in dollars, right? So most people look at the price of gold where it's the gold divided by U.S. dollar, right? For currencies, we're looking at USD on the numerator on gold or precious metals. It's gold on the denominator. So this put pressure on gold to rise up, put silver uh, prices pressure to rise up. Not as actually much on silver, interestingly. Same with platinum as well. A little bit of pressure to rise up. So that's the first big piece of news that's affecting the precious metals. The other big piece of news is actually what I talked about earlier. Uh, another video. Actually, one of the most important videos I've done. I really, really, I know I say this over and over, guys, but I'm not trying to sell you. Uh, it really is one of the biggest pieces of monetary policy news over the last, I think, few years. The Fed's uh, big Jackson Hole uh, announcement. Please see the video that I'll put at the end of this uh, video uh, about the new Fed's huge new policy change. Uh, they made a humongous new changes by placing heavy priority on maximum employment. Again, they have what's called a dual mandate. As in the Fed, they came up with the rules originally in 1913, but they amended the rules in 1977 to have a dual mandate. Basically, one is prices, short term and long term prices. This is inflation, right? And then the other one is employment. Now, for the most part, for the last 30 years or so, it's been just focused on this one. Now, all of a sudden, Jerome Powell changing the rule book. He's not really changing the rule book. He's, he's changing the focus of the Fed to say they're going to put more emphasis on this size. This is massive reflationary policy. This is saying that if the U.S. economy goes back to normal, which it looks like it probably will, and the unemployment rate goes back down to you know, normal levels after the pre-coronavirus levels, they will still continue with monetary easing. Why does it mean this? It means because they're going to be placing emphasis on employment levels, but uh, they're going to be doing it in an, on a assessment level, not a sort of uh, deviation level. Uh, what does this mean? Uh, you guys, again, please watch my other video on this, but it basically means that they will not just put in new monetary stimulus when unemployment rate shoots up when things are bad. They will also do it based on their predictions, based on assessment. This is a very big difference. Just predicting that things may go bad and they now have an excuse to put in more money, uh, more money to the pedal, as they say. So pushing for more inflationary policy. So this is very, very inflationary. And again, inflationary and meaning putting further pressure to sell the US dollar. So again, this also puts pressure on DXY to go down. So both of these events happened two days in a row, the Fed's announcement on the 27th, and then Abe's resignation is on the 28th. These two massive events are having an effect to sell the US dollar, which in tandem puts pressure to go up on precious metals such as gold, silver, platinum. Okay. Now let's get into the second part of the video. What's going to happen to the prices going forward? Let's take a look at the charts and let's take a look at the positioning. So first and foremost, as a review, guys, this is short term analysis. Uh, most of the time I, I recommend doing longer term investments, and I've been always recommending buy gold, silver, platinum for longer term. This is very separate from short term. I recommend you doing both short term and long term in different brokerage accounts, different portfolios. So short term analysis, let's look at gold prices in the very beginning. What's going to happen with the gold price? Well, first and foremost, looking at this, the MACD has now crossed over. Uh, I'm using the original MACD that I used, the original MACD parameters, which was 8186, because that's originally what I said. Uh, I've been using and I want to stick with the same parameters to stay disciplined. When originally I recommended people to start buying when it broke the 1770 level, it was based on the same MACD settings. So I want to stick with this. And once it broke out, I made a huge move higher and I recommended to sell. This is again, short term analysis, not long term guys. Long term, I recommend you hold on to these babies for as long as you can. Because I believe, yes, the prices of these precious metals will shoot up. But short term analysis, you do separately. Again, please watch my videos, short term, long term, in the description area if you don't know what I'm talking about. So 
And I recommended to sell most of it right here, basically because the Bollinger Band started to bust out here. It started to get very, very high. Uh, and then since then, I actually started to recommend uh, when it went down here, when it went back up right around here, I started saying, OK, this looks kind of interesting as the MACD is going down. And I recommended to actually short silver right around here. Why silver instead of gold? Mainly because it was still further away from its uh, moving average. Uh, I believe I was using 20 moving average. That's right. It still had not crossed through the 20 moving average, whereas gold, on the other hand, had already sort of crossed through the 20 moving average. Uh, so I thought silver was a more suitable candidate for selling, and I recommended to sell just a little bit of the futures, maybe SLV if you can find a good borrow fee. Now, looking right here at the charts at SL1, the silver chart and the gold chart, both of them right away we see with the same parameters, the MACD is now crossed. So right away, that has, has to make us disciplined to say, okay, the trend has potentially changed. Uh, so that's first off bat. What else do I see here? Um, in terms of chart, the gold chart here, this declining pattern here uh, with this blue line that I put, it seems like it's trying to break out of it. Now, this is not a strong declining pattern. It's only one, two points. And now, you know, we don't know whether this is a third point or not because we don't know which direction it's going to go in. But as of right now, this declining pattern that was has been in place since August 7th, it seems like it's trying to bust out of the pattern, potentially saying maybe the decline trend is over. Uh, we don't know. Looking at the silver chart here, this is a little bit more of a higher rise. Uh, note here, there's a little bit of a difference. Gold price is still uh, below its 20 day moving average, this purple line. Yet silver price is quite higher than the silver, uh, quite higher than the 20 day moving average. So there is or there is a propensity to buy more silver than gold at the at the moment. We can see in the charts here. It's back to actually close to its uh, recent highs. Uh, the other thing that I notice is the charts are a little bit different. Um, you know, yes, it's back at near highs. Uh, the charts are also a little bit different between with platinum as well. Platinum is also below its 20 day moving average, but this had an interesting head and shoulders, which I recommended to sell right around here. And it's just been sitting in a range. The MACD is also crossing. Interesting. Uh, I want to compare this with the DXY index, which is the dollar index. Now, I tweeted this the other day, my YouTube and Twitter. This is actually cross lower as well. So this is cross lower at the same time that the gold, silver and platinum MACD has crossed higher, uh, probably indicating that short term uh, there is a new trend for the dollar to go down and the precious metals to go up. Uh, so that's my first gut instinct is to say, hmm, yes, perhaps there is a sort of uh, reason here to uh, cut uh, some positions. However, however, guys, however, uh, I'm a little bit skeptical for a few reasons. One is the uh, positioning. Uh, what do I mean by positioning here? So usually when I look at positioning, I look at a lot of different positionings. But what I'm going to talk about right now is net uh, positioning based on uh, COT reports. This is from the commitment of traders reports. Now, looking at the dollar positioning at the moment in the COT reports right now, I'm using a website called Trading Stir. Looking at a five year chart here and I'm looking at asset manager positioning. I'm not not looking at dealers, not looking at leverage, not looking at non reports, not looking at other reports. It's near a five year low for the dollar, meaning there's a lot of people selling the US dollars right now. It's very, very low. So, yes, the dollar could continue to go down here, but I'm a little bit worried based on the fact that this is gone down so much. Again, this is a long term chart. I know it's long term analysis, but the positioning's quite, quite low. And then also comparing this with, for example, the gold positioning, uh, looking at gold positioning here. Sorry, guys, the Internet is very, very slow right now. Gold positioning has been high for a while. Again, this is looking at the uh, net commitment and at CFTC gold speculative net positions here. Uh, this has been high for a while here. So indicating gold is a little bit of a crowded long and the dollar is a little bit of a, I think, a crowded short. So that positioning combined with, you know, looking at positioning and other, you know, silver has been long for a long time. It's not crowded. Uh, probably indicating the reason why silver is still going up and outperform, but it's been net long for a while now. Uh, looking at platinum here, 
Platinum, not showing anything really special. It's kind of neutral at the moment. So what stands out to me really is the gold positioning. It's been let long for a while and the dollar positioning has been, you know, been selling, been, <laughs> been, been, uh, I think relatively historically undervalued at the moment. So I'm a little bit worried, even though the MACD is pointing in this direction for the dollar to sell off more and gold to go up higher. I'm a little spent reticent to get involved the other direction to buy gold and sell the dollar, if that makes sense, because positioning is just so extreme right now. So a little bit hesitant at the moment. Um, difficult to assess which direction things are going. Very, very hard. So let's get to the third part, the last part of this video. Uh, what do you recommend, Dan? So as usual, guys, investing is and always will be self-responsibility. And again, sorry, guys, I'm repeating this over and over. I recommend you put the majority of your money into long-term investments. 70, 90% of your net worth, I can recommend you, you put for a long-term investment portfolio. You uh, hold it for as long as you can for retirement, for et cetera. This is anything over one year. I recommend you hold it as long as possible. The Warren Buffett style. And Long term, guys, as I've been saying since day one, gold, silver, platinum, Bitcoin, I've been holding these for a long time uh, before YouTube. I've been buying pretty uh, heavily since 2015. I like them. Please watch my uh, past videos on why I like them. And separately, I recommend you do short term investment in a separate account to raise your sharp ratio. Again, guys, if you don't know what I'm talking about, all the lingo that I'm talking about, it is in the description area. So please. Look at the description area so you can see the past videos and what I'm talking about to how to maximize returns in your portfolio. So today, what I'm talking about is purely short term, not long term. So in your short term portfolio, what do I recommend you do? Uh, first and foremost, this silver short that I started recommending right around mid-August, it's come to a small loss right now. I think you just cut it because I don't understand what's going on. Uh, I think you just cut right now. Uh, I don't want to say I never cut everything all at once. So I'd say you cut about three quarters. So cut almost all of it. Leave a little bit just because it's just the sort of disciplined way that I was taught. Don't ever get into your position all at once and don't ever get out all at once. Just do it in steps. So I recommend cut about three quarters right here and then wait a few days, maybe a wait a week until you cut the other one quarter. But just cut nonetheless now because the MACD is turned. It is that simple. We must follow the rules. It was a great buy here. A lot of people made a lot of money. A lot of my viewers made a lot of money just buying silver here and riding this trend up. And we tried to short and we sold at a good timing. And now we tried to short here because the MACD moved. But now the MACD's moved again. We can't predict huge events like this happening. It happened. Can't argue with it. The Fed's announcement and Abe's res resignation. I had no idea this was going to happen. Now it's made a change. It's a, this is a game changer for the US dollar. So I think you just get out. I also think you just get out about three quarters of the position for I said short a little bit of platinum here. I started recommending shorting around here with the head and shoulders. Uh, this should be I, you should not have a loss in this. Uh, it should be about the same price if you've been using the futures. So it should be about the exact same price. I think you just cut this as well. Three quarters and then the other quarter wait a few days or a week and just get out. Uh, just wait because the MACD has moved. Now, should do I recommend you buy short term? That's the big question. The answer uh, is no. Why? The MACD's turn, Dan. When the MACD's turn, shouldn't you reverse your position and shouldn't you start buying gold, silver, platinum? Everything's moving the same direction now. No. And the reason why is positioning. Positioning is quite extreme. And this worries me. And positioning is important. Yes, it is longer term. This is a long term chart. But this gold positioning has been quite net long for a while now. And it to me is a little bit worrisome. Uh, not only that, but the dollar positioning has been it's historically very, very low right now. So, yes, there is a probability, of course, the MACD and the trend short term can continue going where we look at the charts here and the US dollar may continue to go down here and down and down and down. And the gold may for gold and silver prices may continue to go up and up and up. It's possible. But positioning is so extreme right now that I recommend you just do nothing at the moment short term. Stick with your long term portfolio. Continue to hold the precious metals. Short term precious metals right now. I think it's a do nothing recommendation.
So guys, uh, hopefully this video is useful. Please subscribe to my channel by pressing the button going forward. Would also very much appreciate your help if you recommend my channel to any of your family and friends. Thanks so much, guys, and I hope you have a great day. Ciao.